Hi everyone. So I'm continuing on with uh, the breast revision series that I started last week. Um, I, I think two weeks ago actually. We have two videos out. So this is a third of the series. Um, uh, last, uh, uh, to pick up on the last uh, uh, video, I'm going to talk about augmentation plus lift today. Okay. Um, augmentation plus lift is an operation that, um, you know, tries to accomplish two contradictory things. All right. The augmentation portion of it is really to push everything out, to take up all of the loose skin and stretch things out. Right. So you're essentially expanding the tissues or taking up the loose skin by filling it up with an implant. The lift, however, is the opposite. You are removing skin and shrinking it. I hope that's clear, right? One part of the augmentation lift or augmentation mastopexy, which is the augmentation part of it, is really pushing out with an implant and occupying all of that loose space that's there without affecting the skin directly by removing it. You're essentially just filling it out or stretching it out. The lift component essentially involves tightening up the tissues by removing skin or cutting it out or tissues, etc. So you're doing two contradictory things at the same time. One push out, one shrink it. And so you have to find that sweet spot, that little balance where the accelerator and the brake are just about right. If you go too fast, you can get into a wreck. If you go too slow, you won't get anywhere kind of thing. So aug lift, augmentation lift, augmentation mastopexy is very much along the same lines where if you do too big an implant or too tight a skin removal, it's not going to have a good match. So the operation is tricky to get right. Again, just to give you historical perspective, which many of you should hear, um, because this is truly about education uh, for, for the consumer, for the patient, not to doctors uh, necessarily. So historically speaking, like I'm talking the 1980s, 90s, even 2000s, there have been many publications that used to estimate that the revision rate for augmentation mastopexy, uh, you know, breast augmentation, you know, lift could be as high as 30, 40 percent sometimes. I mean, think about that. That's like almost one in two people needed a revision surgery. That certainly has changed a lot uh, nowadays, as we talked about the other parts of surgery in the breast, it's decreased a lot, but it's still uh, an operation that may require revision surgery. It's precisely because there's too many variables happening at one time. So what are those variables? Again, just to go over so you guys can understand. So here, I'm going to subset it, right? Aug, lift. So you can have native asymmetry, right? Native asymmetry. Native asymmetry means already the patient has differences in the left versus the right. Remember, we always said they're sisters, not twins. So naturally, you know, women can have different size uh, size breast, different degrees of uh, what we call ptosis or drooping or different sizes where the, you know, the nipple points in one direction and the other one points in another direction, etc. So already you can almost imagine this being on two different people because they have to have two different operations. So if you have native asymmetry, you have to use maybe different implants, sizes, and different lift technique, right? Because each of them are different. And therefore, now you have two different operations, essentially, that you're doing on each breast, and you're doing it twice because there's two breasts, right? So there's a lot of variables to deal with here. And in some of these cases, they may already have had breast surgery before, so the complexity continues to increase. And so this is something that we all should be humble enough to respect, that you know this is very uh, challenging to get right every single time. So another reason you may have asymmetries because the nipple and the areola can stretch. Right? After surgery, you tighten up everything 
and because you know it's being held together tightly sometimes it can widen and spread and that can create an asymmetric look for the nipple areola sometimes people say when the left one is bigger than the right one it could also be because the nerve supply to the nipple areola may get disrupted temporarily or maybe long term uh, rare but it can happen and when that happens the reactivity of that could be different one side, one side versus the other um, or the uh, implant could have a bearing the breast tissue may be different so there's a whole bunch of things that could affect the nipple symmetry it could have abnormal scars abnormal scars right that could also be a problem where you know the scars um, may widen in certain areas sometimes you know incision can kind of break up a little bit which which can happen so what are the types of scars that are used in in um, this type of surgery you could have uh, what we call a donut surgery where you can just have uh, incision around the nipple only or the nipple areola okay so, you know you can simply refer to as a donut you could have a lollipop type of incision where you have an incision around the nipple areola and then across the center and the bottom can kind of slightly have a lazy curve to it. You could obviously also have an anchor scar as well that uh, may be necessary. So all of these incisions, these lines represent essentially stitches, but they're all underneath the skin just for demonstration purposes. But you could have any of these three patterns of uh, uh, stitching. And uh, sometimes the incision can separate a little bit in one corner or the other corner, or some of this may separate, or the, the triangle or part here where multiple incisions meet, like this part, this part, may also some slightly separate because there's too many pieces of tissue come together at one time, right? So. All of these can create abnormal scarring uh, that uh, will need to be revised sometimes, okay? And if you're using different size implants, the weight uh, of the uh, implants are going to affect the tissues differently as well. Okay, so of the incision types that are used, there are three general patterns of incision. This one, where it's basically around the areola, can be referred to as a donut for simplicity donut mastopexy donut lift this is referred to as a lollipop lift this is anchor and basically describing the design of the incisions this is very similar to terminologies used in facelift surgery too like s lift or j lift it's basically the pattern of the incision that is used so there are three different types used the goal of the surgeon should always be to minimize the amount of incisions to accomplish what you have to accomplish but at the same time you never want to sacrifice these four things size shape symmetry for the sake of a scar or incision because in most cases, if we get the size right, shape right, and symmetry right, and since a lot of times scars do fade over time, I think it's a good compromise. I mean, it's almost like you can't have everything perfect, but we try our best to minimize the scars or incisions as much as possible, or the lines, so that we get the size, shape, and symmetry right. So why are these decisions made as to what type of scars that are used, okay? If you look at a breast here, a breast has width to it. And if you look at a breast from the side, it has projection to it. It also has height to it, right? Three different measurements. So it's a three-dimensional structure. And if you want to fix it, you have to think three-dimensionally. If somebody's too wide, you have to narrow it, right? And the only way to narrow it is to remove skin this way so that the breast comes together like this. If you have to shorten the height, you have to remove some of this tissue here, which is essentially a horizontal incision. So you kind of lift it up and make it shorter. If you want to decrease the projection a little bit, you can tighten this up a little bit so that it kind of 
tightens up in the center. So you have to, and some people need only one of those, some people need two of those, some people need all three of those. Depending on the type of uh, skin laxity or looseness one has or the droopiness one has, and depending on the size of the implant used to take up that slack or the loose skin, you have to choose one of these types of incisions, right? I hope that's pretty clear. If somebody has very little loose skin, you put an implant in, all they need is some tightening around the nipple areola, you do a donut mastopexy. If somebody has, you know, need to kind of narrow the, the breast skin because there's a lot of looseness, then you may have to do this. If somebody has all of the three dimensional issues, then you may have to do this. It all really depends. And when you do these types of incisions with an implant underneath, you have to be extraordinarily concerned about implant exposure because if any of these incisions open up, then you worry about the implant being exposed, which you don't want to have. Therefore, it's always a battle. Like I said, it's always a give and take that, you know, accelerator and pedal situation, uh, you know, to find the sweet spot of uh, tightness and looseness. So one of the cardinal rules of making good, inc good incisions is to minimize tension on the incision as much as possible. So with the, with the urge to tighten things up or to expand things too much, if you overdo it, you're certainly going to have a separation of the incision. If you have a separation of an incision, now you worry that you're going to, you know, worry, you know, cause contamination of the implant that may become exposed, and then you may have to do a revision. So these are thoughtful decisions that have to be made so that you prioritize healing and safety. So you don't have to worry about these things, okay? So there may be a need to do a revision because when you do a lot of complex surgery like this, you have to make some compromises. Some adjustments so that first and foremost you're safe first and foremost you don't have any wound healing problem so that once that happens coming out uh, of it like that and tweaking something to make it better is much simpler because now you have a healed situation now you have a healed implant which is in a nice space of its own that's well covered with scar you know, with the, what we call a capsule and then working around the outside to improve the scar quality or the skin laxity becomes a lot easier all right, so there's a need to do a revision because of that, perhaps. Again, this is not a botched job. This is not something went wrong job. This is just thinking through a situation thoughtfully. So you are thinking what's going to happen tomorrow, but what's going to happen next year, what's going to happen six months from now. And then what degree of correction do you want to get to make the patient happy? You know, some patients are certainly pretty you know laid back and they just want improvement so that they look better in clothes or they feel better about it and they're okay others want perfection you know so you have to be able to work with all types and make sure that the patient at the end of the day is happy because no matter how many incisions i draw no matter how many explanations i give at the end of the day if a person inherently doesn't feel good about how they look then you know you have to consider what can i do to make that situation better because that's the ultimate yardstick to measure something right that's really the true measure of success is that if the person is happy and we try very very hard to make that happen so for an augmentation mastopexy augmentation lift those are some of the reasons that you may have to revision as i just went over the other things that apply to the augmentation revision like hardening of the implant uh, or uh, you know all those other things that i spoke about could also be a need for revision uh, but the main reasons are, are these. So I hope in a very simple way, you guys can understand the reasons for augmentation mastopexy. This is a subject that we could talk about forever, but I'm trying to make it, you know, somewhat simplified so that it's, you know, it's uh, digestible for you guys. Okay. Thank you.